Hello everyone. This class will start with lower limb nerve injuries. Sciatic nerve injury is one of the lower limb peripheral nerve injury. Sciatic nerve arises from the L4 to S3 nerve roots from the lumbar plexus. It then passes through the piriformis muscle and then enters the posterior compartment of the thigh. Here it supplies its innervation to the hamstring muscles which are biceps femoris, semitendinosis, semimembranosis and adductor magnus. So adductor magnus has a dual supply from obturator nerve as well as from the sciatic nerve. The hamstring compartment of the adductor magnus is supplied by sciatic nerve. Then before reaching the popliteal fossa at this level, it divides into tibial nerve which passes posterior to the leg and common fibular nerve or common perineal nerve which passes laterally and wraps around the head of the fibula. The tibial nerve passing posteriorly will supply its innervation to the gastrosoleus muscle and the sole of the foot whereas the common perineal nerve will wrap around the neck of the fibula and supplies the muscles such as tibialis anterior, extensor hallucis longus, perineus tertius, extensor digitorum brevis etc. which are lateral anterior compartment of the leg. Let us view the sensory innervation of the sciatic nerve. The tibial nerve supplies the skin of the posterior lateral aspect of the leg, lateral foot and the sole of the foot whereas common fibular nerve supplies the skin of the lateral leg and the dorsum of the foot. You can see in the picture here the cutaneous branch of the common perineal nerve and tibial nerve which are supplying to the posterior lateral aspect of the foot and the lateral aspect of the leg, dorsum of the foot and the sole of the foot. What are the general causes for sciatic nerve injury? Leprosy can cause the nerve injuries. At spine, spina bifida, tumor or disc prolapse can cause sciatic nerve injury. At hip joint or at, at the level of hip, posterior dislocation of the hip, fracture of the hip or acetabulum can compress or injure the nerve on the posterior aspect of the hip joint. At gluteal region, deep intramuscular injections are some of the common causes for sciatic nerve injury. At thigh, fracture shaft of femur, concert injury or any kind of penetrating injury can cause sciatic nerve injury. At knee level, mostly the injured nerve is the common perineal nerve. So common causes are forcible inversion of the knee, dislocation of the knee, fracture lateral condyle of the tibia, tight plaster cast, poor padding during traction. These are some of the causes which compresses the common perineal nerve or the sciatic branch of the sciatic nerve at knee level. What are the clinical presentations of sciatic nerve injury? There will be acute pain at one or even both legs. Pain gets intensified when attempting to stand up and walk again. Difficulty in moving leg. Numbness and burning sensation over the dermatome areas of the sciatic nerve. Weakness of the knee flexion because sciatic nerve supplies the hamstrings and hamstrings are the knee flexors. Weakness in foot movement, especially dorsiflexion, plantar flexion, inversion and eversion will be affected due to weakness of tibialis anterior, perineus longus and perineus brevis, dorsiflexion, especially because of tibialis anterior muscle which goes for weakness and plantar flexion because of gastrosoleus muscle weakness. Patient is not able to maintain the ankle at 90 degree. The foot gets dropped because of the weakness of dorsiflexus, especially the tibialis anterior which has been supplied by common perineal nerve. There will be abnormal weakness or absence of ankle jerk or ankle reflex which is supplied by tibial nerve, the posterior branch of the sciatic nerve. If the sciatic nerve or branch of the sciatic nerves are compressed or entrapped, then it is called as entrapment syndrome. There are basically three types of entrapment syndrome for sciatic nerve which are piriformis syndrome, common perineal nerve syndrome 
and tarsal tunnel syndrome. The first entrapment syndrome is the piriformis syndrome. It is also called as wallet sciatica or fat wallet syndrome. You can see in the picture here the sciatic nerve is passing through the piriformis muscle. The dysfunction at the piriformis muscle can cause entrapment of the sciatic nerve beneath it. So what are the causes for sciatic entrapment between piriformis muscle? The tightness of the muscle can cause compression of the sciatic nerve as well as the hypertrophy of the piriformis muscle. If the person is standing on single leg for a prolonged period of time, this may also cause constant contraction of the piriformis compressing the sciatic nerve. Cross leg sitting and prolonged hip external rotation postures are also common causes for sciatic nerve compression. Sudden contraction of the piriformis muscle such as in playing tennis. Direct trauma to the piriformis muscle also can cause sciatic nerve injury at the level of piriformis muscle. As per the name, if the person has a habit of sitting on a wallet, then it may compress the sciatic nerve beneath the piriformis muscle. What are the clinical presentations of piriformis syndrome? We will see a positive piriformis sign. So piriformis, positive piriformis sign is seen when the patient is asked to lie supine and relax. So during this position, we will see that one hip joint will be more externally rotated compared to the other hip joint. So this may be because of the tightness of piriformis muscle. Therefore, we will call this sign as a positive piriformis sign. There may be deep localized pain on the posterior aspect of the hip. This discomfort often lessens when the patient is lying down. The pain, numbness and paresthesia will be radiating distally into the lower extremity supplied by the sciatic nerve. Freiburg sign is positive that is when the therapist passively internally rotates the hip, the patient complains of pain. SLR will be positive that is straight leg raise test will be positive where the hip will be flexed in knee extended position. In this position patient will complain of pain but when we add external rotation in this position the symptoms may decrease which will suggest that the piriformis muscle is compressing the sciatic nerve. On palpation if you compress the piriformis muscle it may aggravate the pain. So how to palpate the piriformis muscle? We have to draw two lines that is line from PSIS, PSIS to greater trochanter and other line from ASIS to ischial tuberosity. The point where this two line crosses each other is the point where piriformis muscle is situated. So if we compress this area, the symptoms may aggravate. How can you manage the piriformis syndrome? The main aim of management is to decrease inflammation, pain and spasm. So rest and cryotherapy can help reduce pain. Electrical modalities such as ultrasound, IFT and laser can help in reduction of pain and improve function. Heating modalities which are useful in later stages of rehabilitation. Active exercises such as internal and external rotation of the hip will maintain the piriformis elasticity. Passive stretching can be given by the therapist to stress the piriformis muscle if the piriformis muscle is tight. You can see in this picture here, this is the active stretching position. Patient will be asked to lie prone with hip and knee flexed and the knee pointing towards the opposite shoulder. In this position, patient is asked to lie down flat or lie prone as flat as possible. So the piriformis muscle will be stretched. We will ask the patient to hold this position for 30 seconds. Soft tissue mobilization such as deep transfer friction massage also can help reduce in pain by improving the elasticity of the piriformis muscle. Next entrapment is the common perineal nerve entrapment. The common perineal nerve gets entrapped at the area of fibular head or the neck of the fibula. It gets branched from the sciatic nerve and enters the anterior lateral aspect of the leg after wrapping around the head of the fibula. 
Some of the common causes for common perineal nerve injuries surgery to the knee, proximal tibiofibular joint dislocation, fracture of the fibula, use of tight plaster cast of the lower leg which may compress the common perineal nerve on the head of the fibula. Other causes are habitual leg crossing posture, regularly wearing high boots which may compress the common perineal nerve, direct blow to the fibular head especially in case of contact sports like football. What are the clinical presentations of common perineal nerve? As we know the common perineal nerve supplies the dorsiflexors and everters of the foot. Therefore dorsiflexors and everters will go for weakness. Because of the weakness of dorsiflexors, patient will present with foot drop. There will be high stepage gait because patient won't be able to clear the foot which is dropped because of weakness of dorsiflexors. The foot may slap on the ground during foot strike. Patient may stumble during walking and also patient may drag the toe while walking due to which there is high chance of injury of the foot. Tendon reflexes are normal because tendon reflex is not supplied because ankle reflex is not supplied by common perineal nerve. There will be sensory loss to the anterior lateral aspect of the leg and dorsum of the foot. Tapping of the nerve at the fibular head may produce pain and tingling which is called as tenal sign. Perineal nerve tension test will be positive. That is, therapist will flex the hip in knee extended position and then therapist will plantar flex the foot and invert the foot. In this test, patient will complain of pain over the area supplied by common perineal nerve. Other than ankle joint stiffness, atrophy of the muscle, muscle tightness of the gastrosoleus is one of the common complications of common perineal nerve injury because of foot drop. What are the aims for physiotherapy management? The goals are to reduce pain, to prevent complications such as stiffness and tightness, to maintain and increase the muscle strength which is specially for dorsiflexors and everters of the foot, to improve sensory function, to educate patient to protect the denervated skin as well as to protect the dragging foot and ultimately to improve the activity of daily living of the patient. The pain can be reduced by applying TENS, massage and laser therapy. Passive range of motion exercises and mobilization will help in reducing stiffness of the joints and maintaining the mobility of the joints. Stretching of the muscles and tendoachilles will help maintain the length of the muscle. Sensory stimulation such as stroking, brushing and icing can help improve sensory function. Strength training can be done according to the MMT finding where if the grade is 0 or 1 we can use electrical stimulation, if the grade is 2 we can use suspension therapy and if it is not appropriate for ankle joint then therapist can support the foot. If the grade is 2 plus then active assisted range of motion exercises for dorsiflexion and eversion should be encouraged. For grade 3, active range of motion exercises should be encouraged for dorsiflexion and eversion. Once the patient's strength improves to 3 plus, then the therapist can apply resistance if the application of weights or theraband is not appropriate for ankle joint. Splinting of the foot is one of the important management for foot drop. Ankle foot orthosis is used which is made up of lightweight polypropylene. It facilitates a normal stance and swing pattern. It helps to clear the foot during swing phase as well as control plantar flexion of the foot on heel strike. It prevents injury and hazard to the forefoot as it prevents the foot drop and dragging of the foot. It also avoids extra expenditure of the energy during walking and it prevents tightness of the gastrosoleus or tendoachilles by preventing foot drop and maintaining the ankle joint in normal position.